Hello, hello everyone. Good evening. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in to Worth the Truth. I'm your host tonight. My name is Chrislyn. We have finished our series on uh, what love's got to do with it. And we're starting a new series tonight. And that series will be goal setting. Um, Astrid will tell you um, in the minutes to come what those subsequent topics will be um, at the end of the session. So let me introduce my co-host, that's Astrid, and Dawn and Tony may be joining us a little bit later. So we do want to get started on that topic because we only have an hour and time flies. Yes, so it tonight, does. So tonight, yes, it does, it flies. So tonight we're going to be doing <laughs> goal setting and the topic tonight is setting spiritual goals. And um, goals are really the same across the board, um, but it's predicated on, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. So let's define what the word goal means. I, I have three definitions that I uh, looked up for goals and, you know, they all end up being meaning the same thing at the end of the day. So goal setting one is a goal is an objective or a target that someone is trying to reach. Um, a goal is an idea of the future or desired result that a person or a group of people envision, plan, and commit to achieve. The third um, version of a goal setting is the process of identifying something that you want accomplished by establishing measurable goals and time frames. So herein is the definition of the word goal. So it's really basically saying that it's something that you want to accomplish, something that you want to do, and you have to set up a plan in order to accomplish that goal. So no goal can be accomplished without first deciding, you know, what am I going to do? And how am I going to get to the ends of what I'm trying to do? So I, I actually have to do this in my everyday work, and I don't want to be long and lengthy with it, but every day I have to talk to people and we have to do a plan of action. It can't be my goal. It has to be their goal, because if it's my goal, you might feel like that's not something that I want to do. I don't want to do it that way or this way. So we have to talk to people every day and, and uh, uh, you know, discover what it is that you're trying to do. So in other words, if you're trying to lose 20 pounds, how are you going to lose 20 pounds? What's the plan? Well, I'm going to eat healthy every day. I'm going to uh, walk 15 minutes a day. I'm going to structure some home exercises for 10 minutes once a week. You know, that's a plan. It's a time frame and when you want to accomplish that goal. So when you're setting a goal, you set up a plan on identifying exactly what you want to do and how you want to get there. So when you're talking about spiritual goals, um, it's predicated really on where you are as a believer. So a newborn believer is not going to set up the same goal as a person who's been saved for five years. Um, a person who's saved for five years is not going to have the same uh, goal as a teacher or a pastor. So it's really, you know, based on what you're trying to do, identifying what you want to do. But overall, every Christian, every Christian's goal should be to grow, to grow, to grow. So ladies, I have actually, and this is just my thing. So you can talk to me about, you know, what you feel about goal setting and, um, you know, what objectives you would use to obtaining your own goals. So for me, I said developing um, daily devotions as one way, one means. Bible study is another means of, um, you know, growth, uh, prayer time, and memorizing scriptures. So that being said, because I don't want to take up all the time discussing those four objectives, what do you ladies feel like goal setting is to you and what particular points do you want to make in terms of setting those goals? Let's start with you, Dawn. I haven't seen you in a good minute. <laughs> I know. You missed on the last segment. Yeah. Well, I must say, um, I do agree with you, Chrissy, when you said that, um, you know, everybody, um, even though the main reason for setting goals you know, should be, for, well, let me be specific. The main reason for setting spiritual um, goals should be for growth. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that everybody's type or, 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 re or goals is going to be the same. 
And even though I do agree that, you know, that sometimes somebody who is maybe like a new Christian maybe um, go, goes maybe a little bit different than somebody who's maybe a Christian for, you know, for five years, that could kind of sort of be the goals that a new Christian may set can be the same goals that, um, that, a, um, mm -hmm. that someone who is seasoned may set. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, um, it depends on um, what, you know, what particular area they're setting the goals. Like, for instance, you may have somebody who has been a Christian for five years and, um, you know, there were never, there weren't one that would necessarily, you know, like really study the word in debt. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised to know that some new Christians, you know, they start off running, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, they have so much zeal that, you know, they'll go to, they'll enroll into a Bible school, mm -hmm. you know, they'll read the Bible, like, you know, cover to cover several times, mm -hmm. you know, they will go into instant fast. And I, I can even use like Eugene as an example. Um, when he became a Christian, he was one of the first out of all his siblings. Well, no, the second person, his siblings to went on a 21 day fast. And this was a little bit after he became a believer mm -hmm. and he read the Bible cover to cover. Okay. And most time, as you know, it would be seasoned Christians who would do that. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't start off like with a weekend or one week he went into 21 days fasting mm -hmm. so um so i'm saying that to say that you know sometimes the person who is five years a christian 10 years a christian or somebody who is just you know six months sometimes they can have you know the same goals but at the end of the day it's important to set some kind of goals with the reason being you know for growth so i know for like for me Personally, um, I love the Bible app that's on my phone and on my tablet, you know, and things like that. And, you know, they have different um, plans, mm -hmm. um, devotional plans, and they also have different, you know, reading plans. Mm -hmm. So what are we in 2021? Uh, 2019, I did the Bible in one year. And even though I've done it before, I've, this was like my first time doing it, actually doing it by myself. Because I remember as a, as a young teenager, even to like mid-teens, my mother, you know, she did devotion with my sister and I um, every day. Um, she was an RN, so sometimes she worked nights. So if she, if, if she had, was working on the night shift, what she would do, she would do it in the morning with us. Mm -hmm. And then if she was on the day shift, then she would do it in the evening. Mm -hmm. so she would start from Genesis 1 all the way you know to Revelation so we have read I have read the Bible from cover to cover but like I said I've never really done it by myself so I made a conscious effort on in 2019 that my goal is to read the Bible in one year and I did so last year now I asked my sister or in early January she would do the New Testament in one year so we, you know, we went on the app and, you know, she joined in on the app and, you know, we did the New Testament in one year. And not only that, it gives you this, you know, a scripture, it also gives you a, you know, let's talk it over. So at the end of reading the scripture, you kind of like, you know, give your view on what you think, you know, the scripture is, you know, is saying or, you know, so, and I really enjoy that. And it's, you know, and it, um, it monitors you. So it kind of like keeps you you know, um, okay. what's the word I'm looking for? Yes, yes, it keeps you focused, you know, and also it reminds you so you don't really, and you do have the opportunity or, do, or the option, I should say, you know, to catch up. Like for sometimes, it, it, some days, like for instance, if I went somewhere and I got home like really late, you know, I might miss a day, but it gives me the option, you know, to make it up, you know, the next day. So I really enjoy, um, you know, the Bible app so i think for each person the goal may be um different um you know so i've i've known my like for instance i've known my sister to do like you know um the pauline epistles okay yeah she had that goal you know to complete the pauline epistles mm -hmm. and um you know i remember one year i did um um i'm gonna do i did a uh, one chapter of a book of in the in the Psalms, and um, I did a ch chapter 
or in, in Proverbs, along with any other daily, you know, whatever the daily verse was, you know, for the day. And uh, you'd be surprised to know how much you can learn that even if you have read it before several times. <laughs> oh, yeah. You come across, it's like you come across something, you know, new. Mm -hmm. So I think it's for everyone, you know, they should do like a little self-evaluation and just see where, you know, they're lacking and, and just kind of like see where they would like to grow or mature or know more. And then they can take it from there, mm -hmm. whether it's, um, you know, if they want to get like into um, corporate prayer. Maybe they might join a group of people that, you know, that does the conference call praying, you know, every morning or every evening, you know, they can do that. Or, um, you know, they might want to join some kind of like online, you know, Bible study if they're not able to physically go inside, you know, a church building, mm -hmm. um, you know, or even spiritual growth is not even just, you know, um, learning the word and also another spiritual goal that you can set is like, you know, being in operating under the gifts of the spirit, yes. mm -hmm. you know, and the fruits of the spirit, you know, that's something that you can, you know, strive for. Mm -hmm. So you might want to set a goal that, you know, that this year I am going to be more given. I am going to, because, you know, the scripture says, you know, by this all men shall know that you are my disciples when you have love one towards another. Mm -hmm. And love is not just saying, okay, Astrid, I love you. Or, okay, Christy, I love you. Is showing that you love, you yes, know, the person. So you might want to, you might want to set a goal and say that, you know, this year I am going to make a conscious effort to show love by giving, you know, doing for others, you know, mm -hmm. you might want to join the hospitality team at your church, mm -hmm. you know, and especially like, for instance, in during this pandemic, I know a lot of churches, you know, are doing um, like, um, gift bags, you know, with um, toiletries and different things like that, or food, you know, they may have opened up like a food pantry. So, you know, you might want to set a goal, like, you know, this year I'm going to give, you know, a certain amount of money, or I'm going to donate a certain amount of, you know, um, clothes or food items, you know, to the, you know, the church or charitable organization, you know, this year. Mm -hmm. So even that, in my opinion, falls under spiritual um you know spiritual goal because you're making a conscious effort you know to give you know because the bible said we know that our brother and sister have need you know that we should give you know we should you know help them out you know we should give so i think that falls under um you know spiritual growth um you know when we were discussing you know on the under the what's love got to do with it topics you know, subtopics, you know, we're talking about different things about, um, you know, loving and, you know, loving our enemies and, and all of that. That could be something that we may even want to, you know, look into also. Um, you know, how do I handle, um, you know, conflict? How do I handle when someone hurts me? You know, how do I handle when someone, you know, you know, makes me angry? You can set a spiritual goal to, you know, have a better attitude. You know, go into maybe praying and fast and asking God, you know, to change your attitude in, in, in regards to how you deal, you know, with situations, you know, and when people hurt you or, you know, yeah. So you're going to make it a goal like, you know, this year I'm going to let go of, you know, of all the hurt and pain with the help of God. And I'm going to ask God, you know, for his wisdom and knowledge and understanding how to deal with conflict, how to deal with people who just rub me the wrong way, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I believe that, you know, those things are a part of, you know, spiritual growth. And I'm going to go back to say that, you know, that's where I would say that it doesn't matter where you are in your spiritual journey. If you are a new Christian or if you are a seasoned Christian, mm -hmm. there's always room, you know, for growth. Mm -hmm. So, so you'd be surprised to know that a new Christian may even be able to handle conflicts and things like that better than someone who, who's been walking with God for five years or 10 years or 15 years, mm -hmm. you know, that might be something that they, you know, still have to, they're still struggling with and still have to work mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think um, first you would need to start off by just evaluating yourself and maybe even write it down, you know, and then pray and ask God, you know, to help you, mm -hmm. you know, give you clarity, you know, to work on achieving or accomplishing, you know, these goals. So I agree with you, Dawn. Yes. Um, I think you're absolutely right. But that's why I said it depends on where a person is. So whatever spiritual goal that you're going to set, it depends on the individual. 
giving an outline of what that is may is it's not the it's not the gold bar. In other words, it's not the standard by which you know we should consider it. But if mm -hmm. you're going to grow as, as a Christian, there are foundational truths that you have to um, understand, learn, um, build on. So yeah, a person who let's just take your mother for instance, because you said a lot. So you said your mom had a spiritual goal where she would take the time either at night or in the day when she would teach you or, or have Bible study with you guys. That's time yes. management, right? So there you have mm -hmm. a slice of time that she carved out to, to, to study the word of God. So your sister decided that she wanted to study the Pauline epistles. Um, mm -hmm. She sliced out a piece of time. So all that goes under the heading of time management. When yes. do I going to take the time to study the word of God? You have to accompany it with prayer. There must be prayer. Prayer is the simplest way of communication. And we discuss uh, communication in our What's Love Got to Do With This series as well. So in yes. order to develop a great relationship with an individual, it's by communication. So in order to develop a great relationship with God, we have to communicate with God. And prayer is one of the simplest, easiest, best ways because we allow God to come into the smallest part, the smallest details of our lives, and God begins to work on us that way. So prayer is a way of communication. I'm talking to God. God is speaking to me through what? Through his word. Because God is not going to operate separate and apart from his word. That's why it's important to know the word of God. Um, yeah, there's no set rules on what goals you want to accomplish. That's up to the person. That's up to the individual. But growth is important. And the only way to grow is to study the word of God, is to learn the word of God. And when we are praying, what, how do we pray? We say, Father, in your word, you said, and according to your word, Father, I believe your word. That's why when we start saying that uh, healing is the children's bread, that's the word of God. When we say, Father, you said, seek, we shall find. If we knock, it shall be open, right? Whatever the scripture says, we gravitate towards that and we give it to God in prayer. So you can't give God, you can, as a baby, yeah, you can just talk to the Lord, Lord, help me. Father, I don't know what to read or what to say, but... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you by faith and you begin to pray and you'll grow from there. I mean, let's, you know, be real because we were all new to um, um, uh, being born again. We were all new to that. So some people might say you should pray, start praying for the Holy Ghost. You should ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. That should be one of your goals. You should be praying for the Holy Spirit um, so that it can take up residence and live inside of you because the scripture says that, um, the Holy Spirit shall teach you all things and bring all things into your remembrance. Yes, so, yes. you know, um, people have to discern, like you said, you start evaluating yourself about what it is that you need to do to produce some fruit, some growth in your life. And yes, today you might decide, I want to be a, a giver. Some people are not saved and they're humongous givers. They give, they give it all. Right. Um, I don't want to be offensive or anything like that. But, you know, Paul said, even if I give my body to be burned. Yes. There's nothing right at the end of the day. So if you don't have um, love. Mm -hmm. Yes. Without love. What do we have? Mm -hmm. We don't have anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just setting aside um, Bible study is important. Like your mom was teaching you because the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. The other reason is um, Ephesians 6 and 17, because the word of God is a sword. It is also a weapon. It's the sword of the spirit. And, you know, not to go off into the deep end about, you know, setting spiritual goals, but the Bible declares that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we need to know the word of God. We need to know how to use the weapon. Uh, my mother was telling my sister the other day, what's the sense that you having a sword and you don't know how to use it? You know, yeah. we can quote the scriptures all day and don't know how to use it. So um, it's, it's important that we study the word of God and we devote some time to prayer. And, you know, all the other things that goals that we want to accomplish, yes. We can also put those into practice at any time that you want. I'm not telling anybody to put it in 
any particular order, but definitely the learning the word of God and um, prayer are, are, are things that the Lord himself taught his disciples as he was, you know, operating, moving through from town to town, teaching his disciples how to pray and teaching them how to walk um, according to his word. He's at his word, you know, demons came out, people were healed, you know, so um, those are just things that I, I focus on. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You could be newborn and you could be in a church for five years and still be as mean as a snake, as Pastor Brown was preaching the other day. You know, it's all about, <laughs> it's all about, you know, um, setting goals to grow. Why? Because behavior needs to change, right? Our mind needs to change, right? Yeah. The Bible says, be not conformed unto this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So yeah. my mind needs to be renewed. How am I going to renew my mind? I have to renew my mind according to the word. word. Does it mean that I forgot everything that happened in the world? No, I'm just renewing my mind on how I'm going to operate in the world. Right, and I'm going to do it according to the scripture. So I'm not going to be conformed, but transformed, and my mind is going to be transformed. So um, the word of God is, is is imperative that every believer learn that. And some people, uh, I don't even have to call any names. I'm I'm not about that, but I'm just saying, you have people that have just gotten to church that are take off and run, and I mean, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they grow and they just and they move right along. And then you got people that have been there for five years. They still in the way. act. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they been in the way. <laughs> they in the way. <laughs> yes, indeed. So. And you're saying to yourself, you know, you people that have been saved forever, and they still mean, they are still nasty, they still walk according to the flesh, they still carry, they still they have worldly tendencies like jealousy and envy, and um, you know, and 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 those behaviors have to be checked according to the Holy Spirit and according to the word of God. And that's why it's important to set spiritual goals. If you accomplish spiritual goals in God, you have to grow. There is nobody that can come in contact with God, earnestly come in contact with God and there not be a change in behavior. I'm talking about real change. I'm not talking about fake change, superficial change, you know, shallow change. I'm talking about change real change so when you learn the word of god when the word of god convicts you and say you did something wrong you'll go back and you apologize it you admit it you know uh, that spiritual growth right so i could talk about it all day long i could i can talk about it all day long i really could um mm -hmm. but i'm gonna move along to thank you sister dawn to our um to astrid and ask her about um you know her ideas about setting spiritual goals and, and what you might put in, in you know, in correspondence to what uh, Dawn said. Well, piggybacking on both of you, um, setting um, spiritual goals, um, like we all um, spoke on, it's about um, growing spiritually. And um, um, there's a scripture that came to me, I desire above all that you may prosper, even as your soul prosper. And um, we do have, um, even though we are humans, we are made of um, body, um, soul, and spirit. And, um, you know, when, like Dawn was saying, when we get saved, um, or we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that's just a, a first step on growing. That's just the baby steps. Mm -hmm. But then there's so much more in God. You know, um, the scripture says that if anyone lack wisdom, ask him and he will okay. abundantly give us the wisdom you know we should seek for enlightening for our understanding to be enlightened we should seek Amen. for um you know more power mm -hmm. um in the holy ghost and uh, we should seek for to be filled with the holy spirit of god of the living god because the bible said you know um for us to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh and that's one of the spiritual goals that every believer, or every everybody that claims that they have, um, you know, accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior to have is to be full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. um, one, it's because the Holy Spirit knows, um, he said he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, the Holy Spirit knows um, everything about us mm -hmm. and his sole purpose is to direct us into the right path, into the path of righteousness, mm -hmm. to help us, to aid us, to strengthen us, to empower us, to equip us, to be able to go and do the things that God has commanded for us to do. Mm -hmm. um, the Holy Spirit help us learn um, the word of God. It also reveals to us mm -hmm. um, hidden things in the word of God. I, I always said, I think in one of the podcasts that we did before when we was also speaking about um, our spiritual being, that there's nothing more um, precious to me than when God himself through the power of his Holy Spirit enlightens my understanding as I'm reading the word. Mm -hmm. um, like it is like a whole new world that just opens up. And mm -hmm. I don't care how much you study the word of God. And, and yes, we should study, like you said, um, Chris Lynn, you know, to show ourselves approved. Mm -hmm. um, but there's that time that you are studying the scriptures and you heard so many preachers or you or you went through so many other books and stuff and uh, references and, and um, you know, um, um, study Bibles. And that one day, you just read in that one verse, and it's like the Holy Spirit just opens up and gives mm -hmm. you so much clarity and uh, mm -hmm. information. I mean, um, I, I love when God does that to me or when he gives me like a clear understanding. Um, you know, there's nothing like when a preacher gets up and on the pulpit and he's going to preach the word of God and he just like um, say, you know, by revelation what God has, has given him and it, it, it brings so much enlightenment to us and um, it empowers you to the point that you feel energized and you feel like you know what it's worth um having the lord in my life mm -hmm. you know because we were living in like the song said in a world of darkness mm -hmm. but he brought us the light yeah. so yeah. our spiritual goals is to is to um it should be to be more like jesus it should be to be more like um like the Lord and um, in every way, shape and form, we should be examples of, um, of his um, Holy Spirit, you know, by in word, in deed and in conversation. Mm -hmm. Our spiritual war, um, you know, goals should um, entail us, even when we speak, that there will be something in our, our speech that whenever it's spoken, you know, people will be able to, to receive that it, it will be a, a seed that is planted mm -hmm. into somebody's spirit or into somebody's soul. Bishop was saying something today as he was teaching the word. And he said, you know, sometimes we just teach the word of God, but we don't know that um, how that person is going to react yes. afterwards. He mm -hmm. says, sometimes you might say something and it might be insignificant to you, but you don't know the effect that that word did on somebody. Mm -hmm. And um, I know um, personally, you know, there's been times that I've been called to, to expand on the word of God. And I have seen people just, just crying or just, um, you know, coming to the altar and just like weeping before God. And it's because something that I said, um, you know, was able to infiltrate their spirit and give them that, 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 that sense that, okay, this is God speaking to me. Um, spiritually, we, um, like Dawn was saying, you know, we should, we should fast. Um, you know, sometimes people, I'm not saying everyone, but sometimes people just have the tendency to fast only like, you know, like at the beginning of the year, the 21 day fast. But for me, um, because the Bible said, um, you know, watch where you, where you stand before, because, um, you know, so you won't fall. I try to fast like regularly, um, maybe, uh, um, every two weeks, sometimes, um, you know, or, or once a month or twice a month, um, because that's just something personal for me. I need to, um, you know, we go through life and, 
life has um, a lot of a lot of things that can um, wear us down mentally, physically. You know, um, illness, um, debts. Um, you know, trying to pay bills. You know, even if you're you're in a relationship or or you're not in a relationship and you're praying for a relationship, you can get so burdened uh, burdened down by by life shenanigans. And I feel like sometimes, you know, fasting can help that load lift up. Not only that, it empties you of yourself. Like, like, like Dawn mentioned, and you also mentioned, Chrislyn, you know, um, it's, it's um, a, a way of examining ourselves. It's a way of um, seeing, um, putting ourselves in the mirror, and also, um, like you guys said, you know, trying to, to see the areas in our life that needs to be strengthened. Like it says in Revelation, you know, strengthen the things that remain. We, as believers, yes. our, our, our goal should be to, <clears throat> um, you know, to get stronger every day in God. And one thing that you said, Chris Lynn, that I've, I, and I'm, with this, I'm going to finish. And you were saying that everyone that comes in touch with Jesus or everyone that encounters um, the power of God should be transformed. And um, what comes to mind to my mind when you were saying that was the story with the adulterous woman that Jesus had an encounter, a face-to-face -face encounter with her. And when he was asking her, you know, about her husband's and, and um you know, and he was telling her, you know, if you drink of this water, which he was talking about himself, he said, you will never thirst again. Meaning that that craving that you have to have somebody with you, that you're going and you're searching for that love. Mm -hmm. I am the, that, the way, the truth and the life. I am that life that you are looking for. Mm -hmm. And if you um, take a sip of me, you will never thirst again. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've seen in the Bible is that everyone that came in touch with Jesus, not only was healed physically, but they were also healed spiritually. And mm -hmm. one thing with God, Amen. he doesn't come and he doesn't do a halfway job. Right. He does a whole entire mm -hmm. a transformation. Um, people lives were transformed and he would, he, he would make it clear to them. You know, go and sin no more. You know, that, that lifestyle that you live before, you can't live that same lifestyle anymore. The way that you used to speak before, you cannot speak with derogative words. Now your words got to be words of affirmation. Your words got to be words of um, 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 exaltation. Your words got to be words now of, that are loving, that are compassionate. You know, your words got to be words that are empowering now. You can't continue to speak the same foul language and claim that you still have God. I always say, you will know the fruit. The Bible says also, not, not only me, but by the fruits, you shall know them. So the, the Holy Spirit, like the Bible said, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, meekness, temperance, um, long-suffering. And it had it has a whole Jesus, list of them. Joy. So when how you know you're growing spiritually, and our goal should be to grow spiritually, mm -hmm. is when you start displaying the fruits of the spirit. Amen. 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 To that beautifully amen. well said, uh, ladies. Um, I agree with both you and Dawn. Um, but you touched on something. Uh, Dawn touched on it too. That um, about the fasting part. And so. Fasting is, is, it helps you to become more disciplined. And I think yes. that's key to, um, you know, imperative to our growth that we have some discipline. And so when you have discipline, then you're, you're, you're able to, um, you're, be you're, you're better able to stay focused. You're better able to practice different behaviors other than the ones that we are so accustomed to, you know? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think that, um, the thing that I studied first when I got saved, when I got the Holy Ghost, not when I got saved, when I got the Holy Ghost, the first subject I studied was the Holy Spirit. God laid that on my heart. 
-hmm. And Astrid, you said something, you know, that was very important about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an illuminator. Yes. It is an illuminator. It enlightens you on the scriptures. It enlightens you on um, first, you know, for yourself. Yes. And so with that being said, if we were to study this, the, if we were to make a goal to study the Holy Ghost, we will find out the operation of the Holy Spirit. We will find out the office of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit. And so when we think about the person of the Holy Ghost, who, who is Jesus Christ, um, mm-hmm. and, 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 and what was Jesus? Who was Jesus? What, how does that fit into the dynamics? Of course, we know how important that is. Then we have the office of the Holy, Holy Spirit. The office of the Holy Spirit is to uh, teach you and to lead you and to guide you, to help you to understand the word of God. It is to convict you. It is to help you to know that when you are doing something wrong, saying something wrong, going the wrong way, the Holy Ghost steers you gently back and onto the right track. You can't go wrong with with the Holy Ghost, right? And then you have um, uh, the, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Right, so the Holy Spirit will enlighten you on what it is that God will have you to do, and the only way to do that is to spend time with God, spend time in prayer, and spend time in the Word of God. Now, once you spend time with God, it helps you to learn discipline. It helps you to change your behavior, not yeah. just for the sake of changing it so nobody will see it, but it's to, it's to it's that when you begin to teach or to preach or to minister to other people, that the impact that the Holy Spirit has had on your life, you will have on other people when you're ministering the word of God. Because I'll give you an example. There was a lady on the train and she was preaching and she was screaming, oh, you're going to hell because you want to party all night and you want to this and you want to that. And she was just going on and she was saying, she was quoting the scriptures. She had the word of God down pat. This young lady stopped her. She said, miss. I'm, I'm tired of you right about now. She said, now you preach the word of God. She said, but I know I'm in a hole. She said, I don't need you to tell me I'm going to hell. I need you to tell me how to get out of the hole. Yes. And so sometimes you have to. The lack of you know, wisdom. <laughs> yes, a lack of wisdom. When you have the Holy Spirit, it will give you wisdom on how to, how to minister to people. Yes. You know, you know it's the, it, the Holy Spirit is gentle. It's kind. Yes. You know, and, and how its approach to people is to pierce, to penetrate the heart. So, um, you know, when we're setting spiritual goals for ourselves, and it's all for growth, it's all for the ministry, it's all for the work, um, the work of God, you know, but we first start with self. And so when Astrid was talking about, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and how it helps to enlighten you. You know, when you're reading the word of God and when you're studying the word of God and you can do all of that and still, as somebody was saying here tonight, you can do all of that and still not have grown in other areas that are needful for you to grow. Because if you're still, if you still can't love your brother, then that's an issue. If you can't treat people right, that's an issue. If you don't know how to, um, you know, to approach uh, a person who may be mean who may be not spiritual um, and you're feeding into and plugging into that, that's an issue. So um, overall, you have to know what goals you need to set for yourself. If someone comes to you and just, you know, and says, you know, you know, X, Y, and Z, you know, to bring to your attention, it, it's not necessarily to put you down or to bring you down, but it's just to alert you that there's something that you might need to work on. And I hear it all the time when Pastor Brown is teaching. Every time Pastor Brown teaches the word of God, I learn something about myself. And I'm like, yeah, that is true. You know, and then you have to admit that that is who I am. That is also spiritual growth. So at the end of the day, it's not just enough to know the word of God. You have to, as Astrid said, that's the word that caught my ear. It has to become a lifestyle to you. Yes. So every time you set spiritual goals, those goals are to help the word and uh, the everyday things that you practice to become a lifestyle to you. Being a Christian is a lifestyle. It's not just a title. It's a lifestyle. It's Mm -hmm. how you live every day. It doesn't make a difference for me to be able to quote every scripture in the world. And then people look at me and say, I thought she was a Christian. 
Yes. Or to find out something that I'm doing and say, I thought you was a Christian. So everything must come in alignment with um, what God told us to do. And, um, you know, if we were to study to show ourselves approved, and if we were to, as Romans 12 and 1 says, you know, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Um, it, 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 the Bible says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. If the Bible says, keep that heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Yes. These are all things that God teaches us. Um, and, and that might be a goal that I need to uh, deal with my heart. It may be I need to deal with my mind. It may mean that there's something in my spirit or yoke that may need to be destroyed off my life. But once you recognize, as Dawn was saying, once you recognize um, and identify that thing, that's why when I gave you the, um, the definition, it specifically says in there, it specifically says in the definition, the process of identifying something that you want. Mm -hmm. So when you're setting a spiritual goal, you have to identify what it is that you want, what it is that needs to happen to me. If I need God to create in me a clean heart, then how am I going to set a goal for God to create in me a clean heart? One of the first things is, of yes. course, admitting that I need you to create in me a clean heart. If you need to discipline or to get more power over your flesh, you might want to fast and pray. How do I fast? What do I need to do? Pastor Brown is talking to us now about the different fasts. That might be a goal that you might want to set. If you don't want to get bring your flesh under subjection, then that might be a goal that you might want to set. And after you've done all that, then maybe you might want to set other goals. As Dawn said, her sister wanted to study the Pauline epistles. Yes. You know, but it's it's all depending and predicated on um, the person and what their spiritual goals might be. And that's why I said everybody's goal may be um, different, but at the end of the day, it's to bring us to the same end that we're going to grow spiritually in the Lord. And we might identify things, um, our own imperfections, our own shortcomings, um, what are our, our own spiritual needs. And if you're called to the ministry, then you know that, you know, there are things that you have to do to be able for that ministry to grow and to, you know, to be able to be effective in that ministry. So um, yes. with that being said, I, ha I do have a question that I'd like to ask uh, both you ladies now, you know, for the viewers that are watching, when you're setting spiritual goals, it's all predicated on what you want to do, identifying what you want to do, creating a plan of action on how you're going to accomplish that goal. So yes. you might want to accomplish daily objectives to get to the larger objective. So you might want to read the book of Ephesians, you want to study the book of Ephesians. So you're going to start with what? Chapter one today, the whole week, I'm going to study chapter one. And, and next week I'm going to, but you got, you're developing a time frame at the same time. And you're praying and you're asking God to, to help you, to enlighten you on what you're reading and what you're studying, right? So you, you identify what you want to do. You uh, carved out the time to do it. You want to know if it's a goal that you can obtain, that is attainable. It's something that I can do. You want to set daily goals so that you can measure out your growth in that thing that you're trying to um, accomplish. So with that being said, every time we set goals, there are barriers. There are things that come up to try to take us off, um, off track. Our track, right? Yes. So how do you, what would you ladies say would be a good way of avoiding or dealing with barriers um, with, your, with your goal setting? Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, like the Bible said, our inner man has to be renewed day by day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, it's, a, it's a one day at a time thing. You know, when you set goals, there they are short-term goals and they are also long-term goals. Mm -hmm. So we decide, um, you know, which ones are going to be short-term, which ones are going to be long, long, long-term. Um, settings, um, our spiritual goals, um, we have to, like, like um, Dawn said, we have to first assess where we're standing, um, the things that, uh, that we know, because, and there's sometimes um, that we know what, what things triggers our behavior and our actions and mm -hmm. the things that we are going to walk. Like, like, for example, somebody who has an addiction, 
there is a trigger for that person to have that craving for that addiction. So every time it can be a person that they hang out with that mm -hmm. helps them to, to be able to continue in that format, mm -hmm. or it can be an environment, an area mm -hmm. where they, where they um, frequently um, visit that can also trigger um, a way for them to say like, okay, I'm going to do drugs. And every time you go around this area, you know that the drug dealer is there and that every time you go there, you're going to, um, end up, you know, either buying the drugs or, you know, that, that setting is, is there for you to like fall into that temptation mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and to keep you in that bondage. Mm -hmm. So as a believer, when we become believers, um, you have to set goals to daily um, get rid of the old man, to daily modify the, 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 the deeds of the flesh. Mm -hmm. It's a daily walk. It's mm -hmm. not going to be like, um, like you guys mentioned, you know, anger, jealousy, envy, um, you know, strife, bitterness. All these things that are work of the flesh, lying, cheating, conning, you know, adultery, fornication, we should strive as believers to um, ask God to perfect those things which concern in us. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have like, because some, some, some things are easy, um, you know, that you can get rid of it in an easy format. Like I said, that can be like a short term goal. But then there's things that has like strongholds. So what you do to get rid of that stronghold. And the Bible says, you know, that, you know, some, some things can only come out through fasting and mm -hmm. praying. You can't just pray it out. You have to also add fasting for mm -hmm. that bond to be loose, for that chain to be broken. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, you know, our inner man, is very important. It's just like um, eating food every day because mm -hmm. you get hungry. So you you know that you need your vitamins. You know that you need to eat um, a certain um, type of food to keep your body healthy, to keep your mind healthy. Mm -hmm. If you eat um, too much of a too much of one thing, it can be detrimental to your health. So the same way um, spiritually we should do things to um that would help us grow like i was listening to a preacher today and he was saying you have to um you have to ask god to put the right people around you people that would help um propel you to to your destiny people that will bring out the best in you people mm -hmm. that would um help you um achieve your goals when it comes spiritual people that will nurture your gifts and your talents people that okay. would see what God wants to do in you and that they will not come and be jealous of your mm -hmm. gifts and your talents, but that they will nourish it, that they will cultivate it. So you can be empowered to go and fulfill the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we have the right environment, the right sources are around us, there's no telling what we can do or where we can go. One mm -hmm. of the things that I, that I love about the story of um, David was when David was in the field and the Holy Ghost will come upon him, he had no fear. He knew that God was with him. So when he went to um, face Goliath, you know, he relied on that source, which was the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the leading of the Holy Spirit to mm -hmm. tell him exactly what to do, to go to the brook and pick up five stones and put it in a slingshot and, and, and cast it against um, Goliath, and he knew that he would defeat it because he was strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And just like um, Acts, uh, I think it's one in eight that says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So we do need the Holy Ghost to empower us. We, we need the power of the Holy Ghost to help us get rid of the things that are within us that are not pleasing to God and every believer, whether you're a new believer or you've been in the way for a long time, you should be able to um, 
pray and ask God to show you the things that are within that mm -hmm. are displeasing to him. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we might think we're okay. You know, there's some people that really think they're okay. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, I'm fine. You know, I go to church, I read my word, but God sees, mm -hmm. you know, like the Bible says, you know, men um, seek, um, see the, the outward appearance, but God search heart. the heart. Mm -hmm. He knows our heart motives. He knows our heart intentions. And sometimes he'd be like, yeah, that little thing that you have a there. You see, every time you see sister so-and-so, you know, how you start boiling on the inside that, mm -hmm. I, I want to take that away from you. Mm -hmm. Or every time, you know, you see that sister, you feel like you have, because you have that authority, you feel like you can, you know, demean her and, and, you know, put her down. That right there is what I'm trying to tackle, mm -hmm. you know, or every time you see somebody, you know, come in with a new outfit, instead of complimenting that person, you know, you start like, you know, criticizing that, that right there is what I'm trying to tackle. So mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is like my daughter said in that, in that message, you know, it's like that radar that goes, do -do 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 -do, you know, and it yes, tries to like detect the things Ooh. in us that are not pleasing to God. So mm -hmm. our spiritual, setting spiritual goals for us, it should be to mirror God daily mm -hmm. in all, our, in our, in word, deed, in our conversation wonderful awesome i love it i love it i love it i love it yes I, I love the analogy about david um and to take it even just a step further if you were just to look at david overall you wonder how did he become king yes saul chased it chased him for years mm -hmm. but he never let it stop him he never let it deter him yes he never retaliated on Saul. He always kept his heart clean before God as it related to Saul because he says, the scripture says, touch not my anointed, anointed and do and my prophets no harm. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way of looking at when distractions come when, you know, like you said, avoid people, places and things, you know, things that trigger you, things that may make you, um, you know, uh, sidetrack you from your goals, distractions and that sort of thing, whether it's uh, because the temptation is always there and any drug addict will tell you or any alcoholic uh, you know those behaviors um is not something that they unlearn it's just that they replaced it with other things namely let's say the holy spirit and god keeps them every day that the temptation yes. doesn't overtake them so um i love that analogy and i love the fact that you said that that little thing that little thing that little thing um because that little thing, God's coming for that little thing. Yeah. I used to look at Saul nice and say, but you know, it's not fair. You know, the Bible says that God gave David a new heart until yeah. I went back into the scripture. And the Bible says that God also gave Saul a new heart as well. So Saul had the same source, the same resources as David. He chose to do something different with it. And that's why God rejected him. And oftentimes, you know, we look at people and we see, where they are, but do we know the price that they pay to get there? Yes. They set spiritual goals for their lives. They set um, those everyday goals to help them to get to the bigger picture in Christ. They help, they, they search God that, you know, uh, they sought the Lord. They sought him with all their heart. You know, it's not that things didn't happen or distractions didn't come or something came to, to hurt them, to pain them. They didn't um, struggle with some things and uh, so they didn't come to barbar their mind, uh, their spirit, their soul, whatever it is. And, um, you know, it, it, we're, we're human beings. We, we, we're humans. And, and things will happen to come and try to distract you and make you feel like you're not worthy um, and that you're really not saved yes. and, and that, you know, you're really not anointed, you're really not called, whatever it may be, or you're really not saved. Mm -hmm. You know, these things do happen to us as believers. Um, and I'm always reminded about when Pastor Brown said he got saved. His friends told him, in six months, you'll be back, you know? You'll be back, and sometimes yeah. people are not expecting you to grow. They expect yes. you to go. Yes. And they look forward to you going. They don't want you to grow. They want you to go. And, and so um, in order for you to, to be able to recover from that, in order for you to be able to recover the painful um, instances 
um, being saved or the onslaughts of the enemy or the hurt from even church hurt, as we talked about before, in order for you to come back from that, you have to be able to, um, you know, seek the Lord and really ask God to help you and, and to really pray and hold fast to your profession of faith. So I love that analogy um, about David and about, you know, um, you know, Thank how you. you can be distracted, but you have to depend on God. David didn't depend on his own flesh to slay the giant. And yeah. we all have giants, but David didn't um, let the, the thing overtake him. He didn't let the fear of hearing Goliath scream and rail. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defy the armies of the Lord? Yeah. So um, I love that analogy, Sister Astrid, that um, it's that small thing that God will come for. God will come for that little thing. He'll come yeah. for it because at the end of the day, if, if God don't deal with that small thing, it's going to be something really big. It's small gonna grow. make big mess. It's going to grow. <laughs> right? Bible says the tongue is just the smallest member of the body. Yes. But what a fire. What a huge fire the tongue can cause. Nations have fallen. Wars have broke out. Marriages are destroyed, friendships are broken up, all because of the smallest member of the body, which is the tongue. So yes. with that being said, Sister Dawn, um, how do you um, deal with things that try to sidetrack you? Um, you know, what would you say to somebody who set spiritual goals and distractions, um, you know, may try to take you off your course from your spiritual goal? Can't hear you. You're muted. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ashley kind of covered, um, you know, some of the distraction. But one of the things that I wanted to add that sometimes it's not necessarily a distraction, but it can be a deterrent mm -hmm. it, or it can be a discouragement is that um, when we set these goals, There are times when, um, just like with just about anything else in life, when we not only just um, spiritual goals, but you know most goals in life, a lot of time we want instant results. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah, we want instant results. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to learn to be um, realistic with our expectations. Yes, yes. yes. So um, you know we don't beat be too hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So while I say, so like I said, um, you know, um, the, when we don't see the results, it's not necessarily a distraction, but um, it can kind of like, you know, take us off course. Mm -hmm. So when, when, it, when you set your goals, you also have to, um, you know, set realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you have to know what you're working with. Mm -hmm. For example, um, even Astrid and I have had this discussion before. A lot of people I realize over the years that I have observed, a lot of people have a tendency to misunderstand the purpose of fasting. Mm -hmm. If you read throughout the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, there was only two reasons for fasting in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that one was to, um, for healing or breaking strongholds mm -hmm. in your life. And two was for, you know, to put your body under subjection or discipline, you know, when mm -hmm. it comes to, um, you know, coming to God. In the uh, Old Testament, they used to, most time, it, ap it appears that most time in the, in the Old Testament, they used to... Um, go away somewhere, separate themselves, you know, from, you know, their family or regular, you know, regular crowd. For example, when, you know, David's son died, he put on, you know, a, you know, ash cloth, ashes well, I'm sorry, sap, um, ashes and sackcloth, you know, mm -hmm. I went into mm -hmm. fasting, you know, to, um, to see God's face. The purpose of fasting is for you to discipline your flesh or you to crucify your flesh to put your flesh under subjection yes so your spiritually or your spirit man is in tune 
mm-hmm. you know, with God, you know, to hear mm-hmm. from God. Mm-hmm. You know, fasting is also for, you know, empowerment, you know, like I said, to bring that, you know, to bring down strongholds and to also, you know, for healing. Big and also, you know, uh, because I remember the scripture, you know, when um, the, the, the disciples, they asked Jesus, why weren't we able to, you know, to um, cast out that demon, I think it was. And, um, you know, Jesus said, you know, these things come by prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. So one of the main thing in regards to if you decide to set a goal that I'm going to fast or I'm going to fast more, you know, in this coming year is to understand the purpose and the reason for fasting. Yes. You, um, you don't fast for a house. That's right. You don't, you don't fast for cars. Mm-hmm. You don't fast for a husband. Mm-hmm. You don't fast for a child. Those are things that you pray and see God for, but you don't fast for those things. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to fasting, you know, if that's your goal, you have to make sure that you know the purpose of fasting Mm -hmm. and the reason why you're fasting, because, you know, you can have the wrong reason or wrong motives for, you know, to fast. And then when you just see, when you know, when you see that those things are not accomplished, the reason that you set out to fast when it's not accomplished, then you may get discouraged and say, ah, you know what? I'm not even going to bother with this fasting thing because... You know, I tried it. I tried fasting for X, Y, Z and nothing happened. Mm-hmm. So while I, like I said, um, you know, while it may not necessarily be a distraction, it mm-hmm. can be a deter- deterrent if you're not understanding um, why, you know, the reasons Or I'm sure not understand, not, I shouldn't say understanding, if you're not knowledgeable of the reason or the purpose for fasting. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, as you covered, you know, that um, you have to just be, you know, determined. Another thing also, one of the reasons why I like the Bible app is that um, it has reminders on there. Mm-hmm. And um, also you can also do your own little remind. Because if you're not doing, if you're, if you're reading the scriptures and, and you're not doing it, you know, electronically, you can set up your, you know, your own little reminders. Like you might want to put an alarm on your clock or maybe an alarm on your phone or maybe like a little reminder on your phone. Or you might want to write it, write a note down and keep it like, you know, on your little side table, you know, next to your bed or next mm-hmm. to your sofa or next to your, mm-hmm. you know next mm-hmm. to your computer desk, you know, if you, um, if you're, um, you know, reading the word or you're studying the word from your desk, mm-hmm. or, um, if you are decide that you're going to join a group on, you know, online where you're going to study the word with a group of people or Bible, you know, Bible studies, you know, you might want to set up, you know, reminders that way, you know, you don't miss, you know, your daily studying or your daily reading. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, and I find that when you do that over time, you develop a habit and um, you get to a point sometimes where you don't even need a reminder. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's second nature. You just look and you say, oh, it's 8 p.m. Let me just get my Bible, my book and, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you'll just, you know, get into it right away. Mm-hmm. So the more you do it, it becomes like a habit and, you know, set up reminders, you know, and, um, you know, take your time. And um, one of the things that you should be um, also, you should know is that um, even though you may set goals and sometimes you might be on the right track, sometimes Mm -hmm. you don't necessarily accomplish it. You know, and don't beat up yourself if you're not able to accomplish it. The most important thing is that at least you made the effort, Mm -hmm. you know, to, um, yeah, to, you know, to try and, um, you know, um, accomplish or to need, you know, the, you know, to do, you know, to finish that goal that you, you know, that you set. So sometimes you might not be able to, you know, accomplish it, like I said, you know, but at least, you know, you made the attempt. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you miss a day or something, just get on it, you know, the next day or the next chance you, you know, you get. Okay. Yep. Amen. 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 Right, Sister Dawn. Um, Mm -hmm. I I think overall, um, procrastination is is the silent killer procrastination yes. i think um if we're going to set any goal whether spiritual goal or any goal at all personal whatever that goal might be procrastination is a silent killer you need to maximize um uh your daily goal settings um prioritize if it's a distraction is it important is it emergency is it urgent you know those sorts of things that you might want to think about um when something comes to take you off of whatever your daily routine is because 
if you're the kind of person that says, well, I'm going to get up and pray 6 a.m. in the morning, uh, you can't get up 6 o'clock in the morning looking at social media. And, you know, because that's a habit that you might have. So mm -hmm. you might want to avoid bad habits or habits that need to change to accomplish your goal. If mm -hmm. you say that I'm going to um, read my Bible from 7 to 8 o'clock in the evening, you want to try to stick to that goal. Reading your Bible from 7 to 8 o'clock in the evening, no matter what's going on. Um, I'm going to tell you, I mean... When I say that there are like things that happen all day long to try to distract me from something that I'm doing, I literally yeah. mean that all day long. You have to really um, say, I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm not going to pick up this. I'm not yeah. going to, you know, you have to literally say it and, and stick to it. If the phone rings, if it's an emergency, they'll leave you a message. You'll, you'll check the message and you'll say, okay, yeah, well, that's not an emergency. And you'll go back to what you're doing because if you don't, if you don't set, if you set the goal and you don't stick to the goal, then you're letting other things distract you. So if you wanted to save $15 a month, and I don't want to get into the financial goal, and you say, well, you know what, so-and-so and so asked me um, to go out and go do this, that, and my $15, I can't save it, then somebody's taking you from off of your goal. So you, your daily goal, you want to stay acclimated to whatever plan and minimize every single distraction you can change some of the behaviors that you have to accomplish your goal, maximize, you know, daily goals to accomplish the big goal, right? And you want to prioritize whatever that distraction is because sometimes things do come up and that they are important. And I just want to close and, you know, turn it to Astrid with this. Every day we talk about SMART goals. That's what we use to help our patients to become, you know, uh, to, to, to uh, complete their care plans. And, and the SMART goal is simple. Uh, one, it has to be specific. It has to be precise. I think Dawn was talking about that. It has mm -hmm. to be specific and precise in nature. Exactly what goal are you trying to accomplish? Be very specific. Pastor Brown said the same thing in your, in your fasting. When you're fasting, be very specific on what you're fasting for. Mm -hmm. Number two, measure, measurable. A goal must be measurable. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be yes. it, you know, for the success of the project. So yes. You have to be able to measure. Three, attainable. A goal must be attainable. Make sure you can reasonably accomplish your goal within a certain time frame. Reasonably accomplish it in a certain time frame. Four, the goal must be relevant. Your goal should align with your values and your long-term objectives. Um, and time, it must you must set a realistic end date for the. Um, you know, for the task by prioritization and motivation. So the goal must be smart. It must be precise. It must be um, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, uh, relevant, and it must be time-based. So you're not going to say, I'm going to study the Bible. It's gonna, you know, some people might say, I'm going to do it in five years, but they set the goal for five years. But if you set one year, then you know that you have to do something every single day to get to the one year. When are you going to do it? What time of the day you're going to do it? You know, so when you set the goal, make sure they're realistic. Make sure you can accomplish that goal. And, and you will see that there will definitely be some benefits to it. There's definitely going to be growth. There's definitely going to be an impact on your everyday life, whether it's your behavior, um, whether it's, you know, for you to be able to function differently. Um, the Holy Ghost will minister to you um, about what he wants you to do. Um, they're predicated on you know, um, um, how you're seeking God. He says, seek me with your whole heart and you'll find me. Mm -hmm. And so when you find God, God begins to talk to you about everything that you might need to do, but it ain't all going to come overnight. As Dawn said, um, it takes time. It's a process. And mm -hmm. so, um, we can't, there's no way you can talk about, uh, spiritual goals within an hour. We just try to give you a snapshot of some of the things, um, that you, you know, some of the ways that you might want to accomplish that, um, when you're preparing yourself for, um, you know, something that you want to do with your spiritual life. And so um, the care plan has to be yours. The goal has to be yours. The objectives has to be yours. Um, and then you have to follow through on whatever that is and you will see some growth. But every day should be a day where you are doing something devotional for your own spiritual growth and for your own self-worth in the spirit and yada, yada, yada. So with that being said, we're going to turn it over to Astrid, and Astrid is going to talk to you about the uh, subsequent um, goal-setting projects that are coming forth. Astrid.
Um, so today we spoke on um, setting spiritual goals. Um, next week, uh, it's a holiday, but we will still um, air the pre-recorded um, broadcast that we are going to do um, on setting personal goals. So we want you to still um, continue to watch us, like and share. Also visit our YouTube channel where you can watch this video and other um, videos that we have launched um, over the, the past month since last year. Um, one last thing I wanted to say, um, I remember one day that um, God spoke to me about the two thieves on the cross on the day of crucifixion and how he said to me, I had a face-to-face -face encounter with both thieves and um, he was lifted up at their level. And only one of the thieves um, recognized Jesus as a savior and, um, and the one that can deliver him from his state. Mm -hmm. um, while I was sitting in a church, God spoke that to me. And he said, just like that, my Holy Spirit comes into the church. And he says, some people will receive me. Some people will reject me. Mm -hmm. So we should seek spiritual growth. We should seek um, to be empowered. When Jesus was, was going to be ascend, he told them, there's need for me. I must go so mm -hmm. that the comforter may come because we need the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says, you know, it is the anointing that destroys yokes. So whatever yoke or chain or feather or soul tie that we may encounter or that we may have had in our life, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. That's we right. need to continue to seek the, to be full of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of God to be full of, of the Spirit of God so that we can be able to continue okay. to navigate through life um, and the issues of life that life has to bring to us. So with that said, I just, I hope something that was said tonight was able to um, give you some type of enlightenment on um, setting spiritual goals. Every believer should set spiritual goals. Like I said, you should strive for perfection daily. You should strive um, they, every year that pass by, we should be a little bit more closer to becoming more like God. Mm -hmm. We should set goals that, you know, things that used to bother us last year, they mm -hmm. gotta be at least one thing that we should have overcome by this year. Mm -hmm. So um, set goals that are, you know, and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to make those goals mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit comes also to help us achieve those things that we can't do on ourselves. And we realize that we need um, Jesus. We need the aid of the Holy Spirit to be able to accomplish mm -hmm. the tasks that we um, that are set before us on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And by perfecting us, conforming us to, um, you know, molding us and making us um, according to his divine will. And by us submitting ourselves under the mighty hand of God, resisting, you know, those things that we know that are not pleasing to God, resisting the temptation, resist, resisting the, um, the works of the flesh, resisting the works that the enemy um, set before us you know we will get to that place the bible said draw nigh unto god and he will draw nigh unto unto us the more we seek god the more we we press towards the mark of the high calling of god we will achieve the goals that we have set before us amen amen, amen. so we just want you to know that you are loved and you are empowered and you are excellent and you are especially loved we love you <laughs> have, a, have a blessed week wear your mask 
um, you know, yes. do everything um, safely. You know, what's the plan? Wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nurse Brown. <laughs> <laughs> so we want you to take care of yourself. You know, COVID is, is being um, uh, uh, reviving of the, the virus and it's also mutating. So be okay. careful, everyone. You know, um, continue to watch us. Um, God bless you. Have a blessed week. God bless. God bless everyone.